Hey, what's up, fam? Family. I want to show y'all something real quick. All right, check this out. <clears throat> I want to pray first, Father, in the name of Jesus. Open up the eyes and the ears of your people, Lord God, so that they might see you and not me, Father God. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. We live in these crucial times right now where we need to understand the truth, Father God. In your word, you said you are the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, praise. I yield all of this time to you. Everything that I say, Lord God, let it be your words and not mine, in my opinion, from your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone who is listening, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Check this out. Okay. So, the book of Revelations. I'm going to go straight to it. Book of Revelations. If you can, follow me in your Bible. If, if you have a Bible, pause this and go get your Bible so you can see for yourself. Check this out. Revelation 13 and 16. Well, I'm going to start from, I'm going to start from 14. Okay. Now, let me preface this by saying that according to the word of God, all of these things are supposed to take place after the children of God are caught up, the rapture. It's going to start before, and who knows what we, you know, believers might have to go through, but we are not appointed unto wrath, the wrath of God, which is the day of the Lord, which is what happens in the tribulation. If none of y'all have heard of the tribulation, this comes out of the Bible. This is where we're headed right now, according to the what I see and what I see going on and how I'm lining it up with the with the word of God with with um, the Bible. So check it out. The Bible says in um, chapter 13, verse 14 in Revelation, and I'm gonna start at 13. No, I'm gonna start at 14. And this is talking about the Antichrist. Remember, I just said a lot of things aren't gonna the mark of the beast and everything, let me preface, the mark of the beast is not going to happen until after the church is taken out. Okay, that's in the word of God too, but I'm not going to get into that right now. But I'm going to show you, I'm trying to make a correlation into what's happening right now with what the Bible is saying. This is blowing my mind because I never thought I'd be living in the time when this stuff would be happening. So check it out. And he doeth great wonders, talking about the Antichrist. It's 13. I hope you got your Bibles. So that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight, in the sight of the beast. There's Antichrist and there's the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which hath the wound by sword and did live. So this is what I think all of this statue stuff is about, them tearing these down. But they're leaving certain statues up, which is the image of the beast. If you Google the Baphomet, there's a statue of this horn Thing. It's called the Baphomet, B-A-P-H-O. Look it up. You'll see that they, nobody's tearing down those statues. Those statues are going to be the norm going forward. Watch what I'm saying. So now, and it says, 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Life unto the image of the beast. Who had power? The devil, the dragon. If you read the whole chapter 13, it talks about the dragon. The dragon gave power, had power to give life unto the image of the, image of the beast. All right? Now, we know you can, AI, now they, you can, they can do all kinds of things with AI. They can put some my face on another face, and you can watch. We doing it all with all types of apps on the phone and stuff. You can see all just about. You could manipulate anything you want to manipulate on 
on the phone with these apps and with this new technology and everything. They even got stuff. Look up Blue um, Project Blue Blue Light or something. I'll I'll put it in the description for Project Blue Beam. Blue Beam. Look that up. They can even project holograms in the sky and make you think it's a you know they could put images in the sky and make you think that Jesus is in the sky or. Uh, a UFO or anything, they can do this now. They, it, you can see pictures on the internet already. They doing this all over and different. They testing it out over all over the world. So he gives power to the image of the beast, life to the image of the beast. So something a statue can speak or say something. You know what I mean? Or it's crazy. This is all crazy. Okay, and. He he had power to give life, or this is 15, to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, so there's the beast, and then there's the image of the beast. Like, so the image, the beast, according to the word of God, and it'll, it'll explain it more down when we get down here, is is the system of of the world which is run by the devil by satan and the image of the beast and the number of the beast is 666 it's going to say it when we go down here so a lot of people think it's just a mark that they're going to get like you know there's a specific one specific mark but i'm about to prove you that's different there's more to it than just the mark of the beast okay which everybody thinks is just one thing but it's it's um, check this out. This is gonna trip you up. Okay, sixteen, and he causes all. See, a lot of people think, according to the Bible, that the Antichrist or the Beast is going to make people take the mark of the Beast. But that's not what the Bible say. The Bible say he causes. He's gonna cause everybody. I mean, he's going to do something, and as, a, as an effect of what he does, it's going to cause people to take the mark of the beast. Now, I'll tell you what, that, what I believe that is in a minute, but the Bible is going to tell you plainly right here. Check it. <clears throat> and he causes all, both small and great, I mean, no matter who you is, whether you Obama, Beyonce, whoever, Jay-Z, he causes all. Both He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now, people think it's going to be one thing. The mark is going to be one thing. But let me keep reading to show you what it's going to be. And this is the interesting part. This is where I want to get to right here. And he, and that make, that, okay, 17. And that no man, let me go to 16 again, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. That means nobody's going to be able to buy anything unless you have this mark. Or, or, Unless you have the mark. No man may be able to. This is 17. And that no man might buy or sell. Save he had the mark. Okay. Or the name of the beast. Okay. Now you can have the mark. Or you can have the name of the beast. It says up in 16. In your right hand. Unless you have the mark in your right hand. Or in your foreheads. Or you have the name of the beast. Or the number of his name, which is 666. It says here in 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. There's the number of the beast. Count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, which is, and his number is 603 score and 6. 666. So check it out. Okay. So he talks about the mark or you have, or the name of the beast or the number of his name, right? So I've heard it on I've heard this preacher break down the um COVID-19 thing, right? And he was saying because we know that Bill Gates and all of them are pushing to have this vaccine for this 
COVID-19. Why, why would they give this, this disease two names? Okay, it's called coronavirus and they, they labeled it COVID-19. Why two names? Why not just call it one virus? You got the flu, you got, you know, a different one name for all viruses so far, you know, so, but all of a sudden now we got two names for a virus. And don't, t what I'm saying to you, I'm telling you this as a warning. Don't take my word for nothing that I'm saying because people, you could call me crazy and conspiracy theorists all day. It's not going to bother me. I know what I'm, I know what I see and what I believe and what I'm lining up makes sense because I can think and you can think. So think, do your own thinking, do your own research. Don't take my word for it. I'm not telling you, I'm showing you something that is back is, is blowing my mind and making the coalition to the Bible to what's going on today. So check it out. So it says no man will be able to buy or sell. So right now, right now, they mand they mandating that we wear hey, got something on my teeth. They're mandating that we wear masks. Okay. Now, they're not so much enforcing it when you just out in the street or in your car or whatever, you moving around. They it's not a law. They can't make it they haven't made it a law yet. So you can't it's nothing they could do. And remember, the Bible says in fifteen that he's gonna cause as many as do not worship. He's going to cause them to take the mark of the beast. Okay. 16. He causing you. So they're not going to, it's not going to be a law per se. You're not going to have to do it. Right. They're going to do something that makes you want to do it. Okay. So right now you can't go into any store without wearing a mask. Right. Now it was a point where people are trying to, use their rights and there's a lot that you don't understand and that, that I understand which is why I know I'm when I'm making this this coalition and, and it's making sense to me about the law and about money and about commerce there's a lot of stuff that that you, if you knew it it would make more sense to you so the United States is a corporation and the world is run by corporations and banks okay period Everything is based on commerce. You are the consumer. So we go and we buy. I want to get into too deep into this because it's serious. If I told you all of this, it, it would make more sense, but I can't do it right now. So if you if you got questions, you could call me. You know where I'm at. Family, all right? I'm trying to help you understand what time it is and why we need to get things in order with God. So... They talking about pushing this vaccine for this pandemic, for this virus, which has two names, coronavirus and COVID-19. Now, I heard this pastor break COVID down on, um, on this video. And this really made a lot of sense to me because I've been studying how these people, these certain people want to depopulate the earth. They think it's too many people here. These are rich people who got money. They don't need money. They don't care about money anymore. And, and they know what money, what real money is. We think when we put that dollar bill or that coin or whatever in front of us, we think that's real money. But according to the Bible, that's not real money. They know what real money is. Money is something that really has value. It's nothing that you can really easily, readily reproduce. Now, now they can go cut down a million trees and make a thousand, make millions of dollars, you know, off of a tree. And trees are endless, so that's not value. That they, 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 they take this paper, and a lot of people dying over this piece of piece of paper, and making you think that it has value. They made you think, they caused you to believe that it has value. So you fighting and killing over these, uh, these. This, these dollar bills, a hundred dollar bills or whatever, trying to get a million dollars and work yourself to death in the whole nine when they know that it's not really money. They don't even care about money. These people who have the power only understand one thing. What they want is control. They want power and control over this earth. They are godless. They don't have a god over them, so they're thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about you or me or anybody else. They have everything that they want, right? So they don't need money. They got everything they want. Why do they need money? They 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 can go anywhere. They own they own land properties. They own 
whatever, they can do whatever they want. They know that you believe you need money and you need these things. So they use that as a, po a form of power and control or us, or we need it, or you, not me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm relying on the Lord and his word. So they cause you to believe that what they produce and put before you, and I, I can't give a lesson in what real money is, but real money is, is wheat, corn, chattel, beef, things that you can trade that have value. Food has a value because you have to eat to survive and live. That's a, you cannot, you cannot um, thrive or live without food. There are things that we cannot live without. And then there are precious things that we are just hold to high value like gold and silver. That comes after wheat, you know, corn, chattel, you know, you need, we didn't used to eat meat back in the day, you know what I'm saying? But we used to use these beasts of burden to produce food for us, to till these great farms, you know, that was in, back in the day. So all of these things have value. These are the things that are real money. It's called bartering. Back in the day, what they used to do was I have, let's say I have a whole field full of corn, okay, and you hungry, and you have something that I want, okay, that I value, that I think is valuable, so we make a trade, I, you give me what I think is valuable, and it's worth what I'm giving you to me, and what I'm getting is worth me giving what you feel is valuable to you, that's called bartering, that's what we probably need to get back to, fam, I'm telling you, I've been talking about getting having a meeting, but it's a lot of stuff y'all gonna need to understand before that's coming down. You don't understand. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. There's a lot of stuff that I know you don't know because it's being hidden from us. And if you don't dig, you won't get the truth. That's why it's like, if you won't, if you don't get into this Bible and you just taking what somebody tell, tell you about this or taking some preacher's word for this, you're not going to understand the truth. You're not going to understand. You're not going to get it because you got to get into this. You got to do the you have it has something it has to be important enough for you to get into and 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 do the research for yourself so you can know what God is saying to you not what somebody's telling you God is saying to you that's why I know what I'm saying is is on point because I study this I I, I get into this I I want to know. I don't want. I've always been the type of person. That I even my, you know, with my mama. I love my mother to death. Y'all know we love our mom. You know what I mean. I'm not just gonna take anybody's word for anything. And if she says something, and it's not in here, which I love God more than anything, because God is the one who produced my mom, who produced me. So I'm loving the producer rather than the produced more. I love my mom, but I love God more. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. I love my family, but I love God more. Okay, I love me, but I love God more. You know what I'm saying? Because he is the source. Without him, there is no me. Without him, there is no you. There is no family. There is no food. There is nothing without him. So I'm just placing, placing in priority what is right, which is my love for God, which is first. You know, because don't take that. People take that and say, well, you don't know your mom. And I, that's not what I said. Rewind this and see what I'm saying. Okay, so check it. Where was I? So, um, I don't take people's word for what is said. So I'm getting. I'm gonna go back to what what I was talking about. Like, as far as the, because uh, I can tend to ramble. That's why I might edit this. I might edit some of this stuff out, or I may not. I just might just give it to you. Do what you want with it. Rewind it. Whatever. But, okay, so we're getting back to the mass. Okay, so you can't buy or sell. You can't go into a store and they, and they, they're, they are coming down on this. They're, they're starting to reinforce this more and more. So you can't go in the store and forget what's going on in the political world. God got that. That's his business or whatever. And everybody, you have your own choice of who you want to do what you do. I'm trying to get you to see under the surface make the connection with what the bible is saying said was going to happen and what's happening right now so check this out what if this is just a precursor to what the bible is saying revelation 13 to um the mark the 
tribulation and the time of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. Because there are a lot of people who fighting against freedom right now in America. Because we are the last. If America goes, the rest of the world goes wherever America goes. Because we are, we hold the beacon of light for everything in the world. There's some dirty stuff going on that you have no clue about. Because you, because you, are, you just want to go about your day and do your thing. You don't really want to hear about nobody rain on your parade in the whole nine. Well, I'm sorry to say, if you keep thinking like that, no matter what, the the, the evil's gonna come because it's relentless. No matter what, it's going to catch up to you. You can keep burying your head in the in the sand as long as you want. And I'm speaking in general, but eventually. If there's a tidal wave coming and you standing on the beach and the tidal wave is a distance away, you can you can act like it's not coming and ignore it and try to do your little have your little picnic or whatever you want to do on the sand. But eventually it's gonna reach the shores and it's gonna hit you, whether you believe it or not. So check it. What if, according to this Bible, the mask and check this out. This tripped me out when I just made the revelation. It's bugging me out. Now remember, the only people who are going to have to experience this are people who, who weren't prepared and weren't counted worthy to make the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm going to make a video about that later. The marriage supper of the Lamb, which, which means you wasn't ready to go to the rapture. And I, and I, and I know... Me and my nephews and stuff, we used to, you know, I'm talking to families, you know, we, my sons used to, you know, joke about this a little bit or whatever. Joshua would be cracking me up, but check it out. So if you don't make the rapture, you're going to have to go through Revelation 13. You will be here for this, okay, for Revelation 13. There is an escape. I was going to read something to you out of this book right here about um, Noah. And the Bible says in the last days shall be as the days of Noah. This is crazy stuff. I wish I had the time to really, like, but this is, this is blowing my mind, how all of this, I never thought, I, matter of fact, I did. I got curious years and years and years ago when I think when I was about 20, 21 or something like that. And I start, like, this stuff was, I hear people preach about this revelations and this scary. So I'm inquisitive. I like to ask questions. I don't like to just take people's words. So I start like doing research. Wait a minute. What if this is true? Let me read this Bible for myself and see what he is really saying about this. So at the very least, I can see when it start happening or when it's happening. Or I'm, I'm now now my eyes and my my um focus is like when I read it and I start reading the Bible and I start getting to understand the Holy Spirit was revealing the truth of it to me. Then I saw things differently because I see things through the lens of the word of God now. And I filter everything through the word of God. So that's why I'm not deceived. Oh God, I got so much to say. There's the word right there. That's what this is talking about. So all of this is talking about Revelation 13 is deception. When he says he caused people great and small, rich and poor kings, and he caused them. That means he had to trick you. He deceived you. Now, the thing about deception, and look the word up. Look it up and look the def definition. And I'm sorry if I'm going too fast or whatever. I'm trying to get all this out in a manner. That I don't really want to have to do this again. So hopefully, unless the Lord tell me. But fam, listen. The thing about deception issue with deception is you don't know you're deceived when you are being deceived you don't know you're being deceived I remember a lot of times when I got you know when I was younger and I used to get you know and I got a couple times <laughs> I got I got played in a relationship you know what I mean somebody cheated on me I had no idea they was cheating on me they were telling me things that made me believe that they were with me exclusively and then and I've done it I so I know what I'm talking about it's not it's both ways I've done it over and over and over again tell lies and tell people things that are not truth and they believe it moving on with in whatever direction they move in believing that what they know is the truth all the time is a lie that's what you got if you don't hear nothing else I say in this pay attention to that 
when you're deceived, the thing about deception is you don't know you're de being deceived. So how, how, so how are you going to have a defense against that? There is no defense. That's why I cherish this, because this is the truth. This is the only truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? And many people quote the scriptures, and I, I know I'm going back and forth. I'm going to get back to the mask in a minute. Many people quote, quote the scripture that says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But that's what I'm talking about. When you listen to other people tell you stuff about the Bible, then you get misquotes. And if you get one misquote from the Bible, you could think it means something that it's not saying. Because you didn't check. You didn't go in for yourself and check. And then you can't just open it up and read it and say, oh, yeah, it does say that. No, what I mean by checking is you need to open this up. You can't interpret this word. This is the word of God. You have to get revelation from God. He has to tell you what he meant by what he said. So it's not just opening up the Bible and reading. It's opening up the Bible with a humility and saying, God, I don't know anything i don't even know how to it's decipher or interpret it this is too much for me this is too this is too vast and wise for me i can, how could i understand your mind unless you unless you revelate it to me and tell me what it is you're thinking so then not now that mandates a revel, a, re, a relationship with him because he's not going to give his precious pearls and minds and wisdom and stuff to somebody who just wants to use it on for their own no he wants to have a, a, a relationship with you, and when you, when you, when you have an authentic relationship with him, then he will revelate his word to you. Thus, the Bible saying, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me." Jesus Himself said, "I am truth." And the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the word was made flesh. I can't go so much. Okay, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself okay so we quote this some we take some script scriptures out of context because the bible didn't just say if you continue to read it didn't say you shall know the truth and this is what the devil used he take part of the truth and leave certain parts out this is how he deceives you this is how he tr tricks you into thinking you know when you really don't know the bible actually says what it says is Jesus said, was talking to his disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you disciples. That means I will make you think like me. I will make you in, walk like me and talk like me. Follow me and I will make you disciples. And then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So what he, Jesus was saying is, develop a relationship with me. I am the truth. This is how you know the truth. Develop a relationship with me. Then you will know the truth because we will be in relationship. There's a word, in a, a Jewish word called yada. And um, I think you might have heard the phrase yada, yada, yada when, the Jew, when people be saying, oh, you're doing a lot of talking. Well, that phrase really comes from the root word yada. And Jewish people used to say, you know, when you're talking about something, you're saying something, you don't really know what you're talking about, yada, 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 you're just talking. Because the root word of yada means to know. In the Bible, the, it, it really, a, a lot of correlation makes the, 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 the relationship with sex. To know, when, when he says, and Adam knew his wife Eve, meaning that they came together, not just mentally and emotionally, but physically. To know her. He knew his wife Eve. And that's what God is saying. Like he wants an intimate relationship with us. And then he will reveal. You will know the truth. You will know me. When you have an intimate relationship with me. Jesus is saying. It don't just mean. Oh you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Meaning somebody tell you something that's true. And the truth going to make you free. No Christ is the truth. And he it makes you free. He said in his word. That whom the son sets free is free indeed. And he opens up your mind so that you can see when somebody's lying to you. If you know the truth, you cannot be lied to. You cannot be deceived because you know the truth. When it's somebody comes and tells you that orange is red, you know that that's a lie. Because I'm going to tell you something. Whether you believe it or not, you can be deceived. I'm, I'm, I, can show you, I, I can show you a video in particular why people just follow the whore because a hundred million people 
are doing something or saying something, we might believe that that's the normal, that's true. Well, I tell you, my motto is, and I always tell people this is, even if 100 million people are saying something that is a lie, guess what? It's still a lie. It doesn't matter that 100 million people are saying it. It's still a lie. But we tend to think that because the masses are doing something or saying something, that it must be the truth. That's not true. So getting back to the masks, okay, so they saying, the corporations are saying, you don't know about money. You don't know about money. I promise you, you don't know about money or you don't know enough of what you need to know about money. These people don't need money. The world is run by corporations. They have it all because they rely on you to come in and exchange a debt. What you're doing is the Bible, even on your dollar bill, it doesn't. that dollar doesn't give you the ability to purchase anything. All you can do is exchange a debt. It tells you on there. On there. I won't get into that. So the mask. So you go into one of these corporations. This is why there. This is there's an effort to destroy small businesses because they want you to be able to come to one or two places to have all of your needs, to get everything you need, to purchase everything you need. Okay, so you go to the store now and they say you can't come into this store. They will come and tell you now. First it was. You come, they might come and say, well, you know, you have an excuse, you have a medical. Because remember, it's not a law. It's not a law. But you don't understand the difference between private citizen and between private sovereign and citizen. Because you're a citizen, these corporations can do whatever they want. There's a certain laws that you don't understand, the law of adhesion. There's the, these are things that we, because we don't know them, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Remember that? Because we don't know and we've been educated by people who have an, uh, their agenda is to keep us dumbed down so that we don't know real math. We don't know what real money is. We don't know what real things is. And while we watching football and basketball and we being entertained by, you know, they're running things and running the world according to what they want. And they're using their mediums, which is the TV and the, all, all of these things to program us into thinking the way that they want to think where we are following whatever narrative that they put out this is what i mean by deception when you think you know but you really don't know you going along and you might be fighting a war that is against yourself thinking you fighting the enemy when the enemy got you fighting for him against yourself your enemy has you fighting yourself that's crazy. That's crazy. But let, listen, you go in the store. Now, the the manager will come to you and say, "You can't. You can't. You can't even be in here without a mask on." Whoa. So it's not a law that you wear a mask, but you can't enter into our establishment. Corporate law and private is two separate things. It's different. Okay, if you want something from them and you want to go into their establishment to get something that they have that you feel like you need, they have the right to regulate. It's called adhesion contract. And we have so many of them. I'll get into that later. Your driver's license is an adhesion contract. It's a different name for it, but you don't understand contract law. You don't know what's really going on. Your driver's license, your birth certificate, and your um, social security card and any other document that has your name in full caps. That's a whole nother story. I don't got time to get into that. Call me if you want to talk about it. If you don't, if you don't care. After this, what you won't be able to say is you did not know. If you watch this, I, I should have put, I, I might, I should have put a, a disclaimer in the front of this. Listen, don't watch this if you don't want to know, because all I'm doing is sharing information. All right. Don't kill the messenger. Don't come at me. And all I'm doing is sharing what the truth is. And your blood is not going to be on my hands after this. Okay, so your choice is yours. You can do whatever you want with this. You can turn this off right now and never watch it again. But I did what I... I, I made an attempt to do this I don't know how many times. And I just... For whatever reason, sometimes I did the whole thing and it didn't... I meant to do it live and it didn't come out live. That's why I'm recording it right now. Okay, so listen. 
the corporation that you go to now there's not because a lot of the a lot of the independent businesses is going to be wiped out okay and this is by design okay the bible said he's going to cause this to happen so if you don't see that this is by design you thinking everything going to go back to normal never it's never going back to normal again it's not going to happen this is what god said is going to happen you see how thin this is right here this is the end of the book the end this is the end revelation for those who don't know christ for those who do know Christ, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of eternity with him. I'll get into that later. Okay, so the corporation that you go in, like Walmart or something, when they start saying, you can't even come in here unless you have the mask on. What that is doing is training you and acclimating you to be able to say, wow, well, I can't even buy my toilet paper. My, I can't buy what I need for my house. My kids is hungry. I got to get them food, blah, blah, blah. I got to... What? And this is the only store I could go to. It. I don't have a farm. I didn't, I didn't grow my own food. I, you know, and I might. I, I don't have enough to feed. You know, you growing your little, you growing your little garden in your backyard. You know, you and like one of the comedians said. It's like which made so much sense to me, because I thought about, you know, stocking up and all this stuff and getting stuff. And in the city, when you're close to a lot of people. Let you, let's say you live next door to somebody who's struggling and striving or whatever. You got your little garden. They see your little garden in the back, and they hungry, and their kids hungry. And you thinking that's just for you and your family. You making sure your family eat. You think them people ain't going to, if they don't have no sense of God and they hungry, and when they become desperate, you think they're not going to come over and they're going to knock and ask. That's what y'all using as a, that's what everybody, Black Lives Matter, using as a, as a, as a, means to move forward with their movement oh i keep knocking i've been knocking and you ain't trying to give me nothing so we gonna take it we gonna tear stuff up you think that next door neighbor ain't gonna see your garden and see know that you got stuff stacked up in your basement and stuff and and they starving and they not gonna come next door and try to take what you got you think that ain't gonna happen especially if you living in the city now if you out in the country they gotta work a little harder they gotta get out there and if you smart you posting up and you making sure listen they gonna we gonna make it hard for you to take what we got but you living in a city where it's like like people on welfare when they cut welfare off what you think people gonna do it's gonna be they gonna be hungry they're not gonna care Thank you for storing all of this up for me, but we about to raid your garden. What you going to do if we got guns and stuff? You going to go out there and stop them? No. We about to take, oh, your, oh, let's check and see if they got something in the house since they doing a the garden. We, they look like they prepping and making sure you, there is no escape is what I'm saying, okay, for what's coming. So you can't go into the corporate store to buy anything. You, that means you can't feed. Okay, you get mad, whatever. What you going to do? Nothing. Martial law happens when you start breaking into the stores and saying, we got to eat and take it stuff. The law, and let me tell you something about the police again. Well, another thing you don't know is the police, okay, are owned by these corporations. And the only thing these corporations are concerned with is their property. Police are no longer, they say, protect and serve you in your mind. That's what I mean by deceived. You are deceived to believe that the police are here for your protection. No, they're not, honey. The police are owned by these corporate bankers that own these corporations. And their only job, and which they get paid for, and which they get funded for, and the whole nine, is to protect the property of these people, these corporations. The United States is a corporation. I don't know if this is making any sense, but I'm telling you, this is some crazy stuff. It's blowing my mind. All these years, I was like, wow, people were saying, make me, Rick, you, 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 you too much into this, man. You you bring, but I'm saying, okay, but I'm supposed to see what's going on and ignore it. No, not gonna, I'm not going to let it put me into uh, bondage because Christ is my freedom. He gave me the freedom to live. And, and believe me, it's a fight in my mind and stuff. And a lot of this stuff, everything that's happening is affecting me just like it's affecting anybody else. There's certain things I can't do. I'm a musician. I can Now, I can't make money. I can't go and do what I do and make money because we can't even come together. See what I mean? The chokehold now. Now, you can't buy or sell <laughs> unless you do it with the mark. So they're training us. They're training us now 
to comply. If we comply with the masks, okay, then the next step is when they roll out this vaccine, so-called vaccine that they've already had. This was a this was planned before COVID. They know, you know, China didn't start this. This is all planned. This is global government, the new world order. This is what the Bible talks about when it talks about the Antichrist will run the world. It's going to be a new world government and a world religion. Okay. Uh, I should have prefaced all that by telling you. Now, I'm going to get back to the COVID thing in the video that I saw and what COVID means. So now, when they come with this vac when they come with this vaccine, now the COVID is what this preacher explained to me. And this can't be coincidence. He broke it down, COVID. Now, this is the, this is the official name for what it is. The, now, this is to let you know that they've been planning this. COVID, the C stands for certificate now what is the vaccine the mark is going to be your certificate this is remember it says it's going to give you a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name you're going to have to have this in order to buy and sell this is looking a whole lot like what's going on now they're going to say this vaccine this 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 virus is so deadly in order to protect the rest of the world and to protect everything else this is what we're going to do if you don't have this vaccine, you can't come and buy anything into our stores. They already got you now, so where if you don't put the mask on, you can't come and buy anything or sell anything in our stores. You don't have nothing to sell anyways as lay people, whatever, what you selling. So now they already said it so that other corporations can't grow and be big unless they have that mark, which is the barcode, right? I won't get into that. So now when they roll out this vaccine, Right, they're gonna say, you gotta have this mark. COVID nineteen, the way this dude broke it down, certificate of vaccination ID. That's your mark. This is your ID. This is the ID, the certificate of vaccination C O V I D COVID. Right. This is the way he broke it down. Certificate, you got to have a certificate of vaccination to get in here. That's your ID now, which is a mark either on your forehead, the way the Bible in chapter 13 says, or your right hand, right? Watch, they're going to be, watch, this is going to start. They're going to start focusing on the forehead and the white hand in a minute. They already got all this stuff right, right? So. Then you have coronavirus, that's the virus. So why give it another name? This is what don't make sense to me. You gotta think, like, this, don't, this stuff don't make sense. But we accept it because we just take the narrative. Oh, a million people saying it, then it must be right. Certificate of vaccination, ID. So, okay, so what does the 19 stand for? The way he broke it down, the number one is the first letter of the alphabet, which is A, right? The number nine is the ninth letter of the alphabet, which is what letter? I. A I. Now, let's tie all that into 5G. Why everybody is tripping over COVID-19 or uh, coronavirus or whatever you call it, and they they causing you to be, this is how another way the devil deceives you. He causes you to be distracted by one thing while he's doing something over here. They have already rolled out 5G. The towers are everywhere now. Why you, and nobody's saying nothing about this. This ain't in the news. They just did it. They just upgraded from 4G to 5G in our faces, and it's out there. It's out there. The interesting thing about 5G is if you go back to the beginning when Trump was saying, and I'm not support, I'm not supporting Trump. I'm praying for Trump. I'm praying for God, whoever God wanted office, to be in office. The thing about if you go back to the beginning of this and you watch some of the videos, which there, which is another issue, is now they censoring your social media. So everybody who puts stuff like this up or whatever who says anything against. What? Because remember, now the corporations own the media. They're going to tell you what they want you to hear. That's the whole purpose and whole point of deception. I got to have tools. I got to use lies. I got to 
to I got to control certain things to lie to you. So they control the media. So they tell you what they want to tell you. They put on what they want. They don't put on other stuff. That's why all of y'all, most of y'all believe in the lie. There's, there's a lie that's going on. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just here to, I'm not here to do no political nothing. I'm here to expose the truth to you, fam. Check it. There's a lie that you're believing that if you do the research, you will see that, wait a minute, the very thing that I'm saying, that I'm, I am have disdain for this person for, that they told me that he did, wasn't, isn't true. And because they're not going to put both sides of the story up equally and honestly, because it's not to their advantage to do that. If this, if they're trying to have world government, why? Then if, if and I gotta get a lie out there to do it, why then would I then put give you the truth? So me, I'm just gonna show you the truth and the lie to me. No, I'm gonna keep the truth from you. So now they censoring social media. So now when you put stuff up, remember they gonna cause you. You can't buy or sell. You can't do anything. They own the media, social media and the news. Most of the news, anyways. The news that you paying attention to, they own. And the minute they're going to, they can't control the internet right now. But if you see, corporations are starting to put commercials on YouTube. So now it's not no longer just, it's, it's been monetized. It's been, inc they incorporating it. These people who own YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, all of them, they, they, they owned so they can't just do what they want to do. If they, if something comes up on there that is that is contrary to what their agenda is, if you owned it and somebody put something up there that was contrary or called to your Facebook page and put something up there that was like, nah, I don't want that on my page. Whether whether anybody else is a benefit in front of it or not, you have the sole right to say, I don't want that on my page. This is what they're doing. It's called censorship. Now we into the age of censorship. The devil can't lie unless he censors. It, what he did in the Garden of Eden was censor the truth. He told Eve part of the truth, but he didn't tell her the whole truth. But she believed it because it sounded good. That, but she didn't. She didn't go back and check with her husband to say, "Wait a minute." He said, "Blah blah blah." And then he even believed that crap. So censorship is part of the deception of the two, one of the tools of deception. Anyway, so when they roll out this vaccine. This is what my point. We are so close to what the Bible calls the taking away of the of the church. It doesn't say the rapture. No, it doesn't. But it does specifically say, and there are a lot of scriptures to back it up, that his people, the bride of Christ, are um are not appointed to the wrath of God. Now, the tribulation period. Whew. See, and this is withholding information about the tribulation period. Now, I got some videos if they haven't taken them down on my um, on my uh, Facebook page that talks about the tribulation. One in particular that you need to go talk about. That talk, it breaks down this whole book of Revelation. You need to go check it out. I'm going to post it again. I believe it's called Revelation. Um, it broken down. The book of Revelation broken down. And it's so easy to understand if you watch it. But I, I'm telling you, the reason you need to watch it is because you need to know that the next event, according to this Bible prophecy, that's supposed to happen, okay, and there are signs that going to lead up to that. I don't, I'm not saying the rapture going to happen next week or by the end of this year. I'm not even saying it's going to happen within the next two, three, four years. Okay, I'm saying that I'm making the correlation between how things are looking and according to this Bible. It's just too coincidental to me to ignore. Okay, so I'm not saying the rapture going to happen at the end of this year or whatever before this year, but it could happen. And I'm only calling it the rapture because that's what people know it as. What it's called is the taking away of the saints. The Bible and the scripture says that that he which letteth shall let no more when he is taken out. And then the Antichrist will be revealed. He, We can't know who he is 
until the church is taken out. Me and so Sissy, y'all know we had a little quick debate about all of that. When the church is taken out, then the wrath of God, which is what he calls the tribulation period, which is the, the wrath of God upon this earth. He going to give y'all exactly what y'all want, a world without him. He's going to take his spirit out of the church, out of the earth, which is the only thing that's holding the Antichrist back, which is the spirit of truth. Okay? Because that's the only way he can can get away with what they're getting away with. Is they got to be able to deceive you into believing that what you see is not what you're seeing. That's what the devil's, that's all he got is a lie. The Bible says he's the father of lies. So anything that is, anybody that is a father has children. So these are his children that are doing his bidding. The Bible says that the said Satan is the father of lies. And he uses lies to deceive people. Those are his tools. Deception. Withholding the truth. The Bible says they, they, they hold the truth and write, some people hold the truth knowing it. They know the truth. They know the Bible. They know what's coming. You just don't know. So they keep you entertained. They keep us, you know, watching, you know, elated with trying to make it, quote unquote, successful in this world. And to have this and to have that and have, when you don't know, it's almost over. It's been already written. It is written. These things are going to happen. So I'm just making the correlation. Is this like, I believe this word of God. And so when I look, I'm looking out of the lens of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And if you don't know this, you don't know Christ. So my point is, the next event to happen is Christ is going to take his church out. Now we need to talk about what that means. This is going to be longer than I thought it was going to be, obviously. Because I, I honestly, and let me reiterate, don't take my word for none of this. If you're not going to get into the mindset of, wait a minute, hold up. Everything else is on pause right now. Let me check and see if this joker is talking anything that makes any sense that's truth. Let me look in here for myself. And you don't even have to have a Bible now. As of right now, you can go on YouTube and pull up any book in the Bible and it'll come up. Even the books. I got books in this particular Bible that were taken out. See, and that's why I'm telling you about how the enemy will take stuff out. You know what I mean? Like the apocryphal and stuff like that. That I don't know that it was it was in the Bible. When they canon, canonized this, certain things were left out. I don't want to say it was taken out. It was left out of the 66. There are more than 66 books is what I'm saying. And I have them all in this particular Bible. I have the apocrypha, the Septuagint, and everything. So I'm saying you could dismiss this or you can say, listen, I ain't taking this joke of word for it. But I'm telling you, the consequences of you not knowing may be detrimental to your eternal soul, okay? You, your blood is not going to be on my hands. I love you, I, you, my family, and the whole nine, and I love you. And, and I'm sure that there, there are family members right now that can back up everything that I'm saying right now. They know what I'm saying is the truth. They can back it up. My sister's... Some of my sisters, my brothers, because God has blessed this family to have a knowledge of him and eschatology that is really needed in this time. Okay, so check it. The rapture is going to happen. Is it Christ? What it really is, is Christ coming back for his bride. I don't know if you ever heard of the term, the bride of Christ. Okay, Christ is coming for his bride. This is God's gift to himself, to his son. His people who believe in him and follow him and obey his commandments and know that who he is, who he really is. He is the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. And we believe that and we are following this and we follow him and we and there are certain commandments that he's given us that we follow and we live a different way. We live according to how he tells us to leave. He, he live. He is the king. So he gets to dictate to us what he has paid for us. He bought us with his with his own blood. He he died on the cross innocently in exchange for my sins so that I could be with him so that I could be restored back to fellowship and intimacy yada with 
God and with Christ. Okay? That's what he did. And those of us who I believe he refers to us. This is why marriage is important. This is why marriage is right now. Let me just stop and say this. You people that are married, you are the last, you are the pillars of society. Family, this is why I'm talking to you, fam. Family is God's idea because that's what he has in in the heavenlies, a family, and he wanted to add us to. This is why the scriptures say that we were adopted into the, his his family, which was the original Hebrews that he called out. Nothing special they did. He just decided this is the people that I'm going to use to to affect all of the rest of my creation. He didn't choose them just because he wanted to deal with them. No, he the purpose was for to use the Hebrew Israelites to win the rest of his creation, to be an example so that they could see when what he does with this nation to see how he wants to do with them not to exclude them from anybody this is why we were adopted adopted into the family the gentiles were adopted now i believe we are the true, true hebrews but i can't prove that so i'm not going to go into that we were adopted so because it really don't make no matter okay that hebrew thing let me just check that real quick that whole hebrew thing Okay, it really don't make no matter because the reason that the Hebrew Israelites were put in the position that they were put in in the first place, which was cast away from Christ because we rejected Christ. Okay, that's that's why. And he said, this is his words. Go to Ezekiel and, and Daniel. He said that this is why I'm going to scatter you all across the earth. And not just scatter you across the earth. Read the Bible. You're not getting the whole story. This is how I know you can identify the true Hebrew Israelites. They're scattered all across the earth. Why? Because you rejected Christ. You rejected what I came. He said, I cried. I came. I would have taken you into my bosom like a, a, a hen takes his, his baby chicks. But you wouldn't have nothing to me. Therefore, God, because of your rejection of him, scattered you as a nation all across the world. You were a nation. You were scattered because you rejected him. You rejected God. Okay, you didn't want him. You wanted what the world had to offer, the finer things, the king. You wanted your own king and all that stuff. That's what the nation of, of Israel did. And God scattered them. And, and he said, not only am I going to scatter you, but your name is, your, your, you're going to be a byword. Okay? They're not even going to call. You're not even going to know who you are. Your, when, when your children start having children, you know the first generation that was scattered, they knew. But, it, but as time went on, that, ever, that, that tradition or that, that who they were was preserved only in, in certain remnants. But, the, but as they kept having babies and babies and scattering all over the world, they don't even know who they are. And God said, you wouldn't know who you, you're not going to know who you are until the time of the end when I'm going to show you. Now, we ain't going to get into the Israelites and the Jews that's over there now, the Jewish people that are over in Israel right now. I'm not going to get into, I can, you, I'm opening up all of this knowledge and everything that I know to my, to you guys, if you want to know, I, just like the Bible, I wanted to know, so I got into it. So if you don't want to know, you ain't going, I'm not going to, I'm going to give you what so that I can get your blood off my hands, what you need to know, what you need to know. But if you want to know what's really going on, you're going to have to do the research. You're going to have to get into this. You're going to have to shut down everything else. It don't matter. Your soul is at stake. When God takes his people out, which is the bride, the, to the, he's taking his bride to the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is what it's called. Where Christ now, and all of his believers, which collectively are called his bride, the ecclesia, the church, okay, come together and sup with him in fellowship and in victory and in celebration. This is going to happen while the rest of the earth is suffering the wrath of God, the tribulation. I admonish you to watch that video because it's going to tell you what's going to happen during the tribulation. And trust me, you do not want to be here but your only escape no man coming to the father except
by me, Christ Jesus. And there are people on this earth that know that, that want to, to preserve their lifestyle and the things that they're doing, which is wicked and evil outside of God. And they know that they don't want the truth. They don't want God. They know who he is. They know about him. Trust me, but they don't want him. And so they want to destroy anything that's about God. That's why the persecution of the church is coming soon. It's already here, but it's all over the world, but it's coming soon. So when America falls, there is no more protection for or for the church. Now, things are getting so bad where the Bible calls it gross darkness. And so, well, I'm already an hour. I didn't mean to be talking this long. And I'm sorry I'm talking so fast, but it's a so, whole lot. And maybe I should slow down. Maybe I'll make some. If you ask me. And if you watch this video and st anything in this video that I'm touching points on, which is the most important things, and you want to know more about it, whether it's the money, whether it's the rap the rapture or the bride of Christ or anything, get at me and, and I'll share it with you. But other than that, it's too much. It's just too much to really get into. But so if... That is the next agenda on it. And they gave us signs to watch the taking away of the church. That means people are going to disappear out of this earth. Now, they already have a way to explain this to keep you further deceived. They went with the look up blue beam, right? They're going to project stuff in the sky and make it seem like, I don't know how they're going to do it or what they're going to do exactly, but they got seven, they got, the devil got many ways to deceive because, you know, people going to have questions and they, so he got, <clears throat> many tools to deceive us. Many tools. Not just one thing. So many tools that don't make no sense. But it's just like when they used to teach people, I used to tell this story, when they used to teach their people how to, the people who work for the government, how to recognize and, and um, um, counterfeit money. Okay. What they make you do is they don't make you study the many different ways or many means of counterfeit. That's that's tedious and pointless because as it changes, that people keep coming up. That's what hackers come up with different ways to hack at computers. Once you figure out a solution, it's endless. People gonna figure out a way to get what they want and do what they want, want to do one way or the other. When you change up something and you think you have a secure defense, somebody gonna figure out how to get through that defense. That's just life. That's the way it is. So when they teach people how to recognize counterfeit money, the government, they don't make you study the vast many ways you can't. What they do is they have you study the authentic original. Study this. This is the real thing. Don't pay attention to because if you know this, if you know this authentic dollar, because this is, can be manipulated and changed. But if you know how we created and how we, this is the authentic. Study this. Go over it over and over and over. Know it, de know it detail by detail by detail. The ink that's, that is used, the ink that is on it, how much of it is used, what is these strips are for, what we put on the name. Study that. Then when somebody brings you anything that's different from this, you'll know that it's counterfeit. It's the same with the Bible. If you don't study this and you don't know it for yourself, I could tell you anything. I could be telling you anything. That's why I don't matter in the whole equation. I prayed in the beginning that the Spirit of God will reveal the truth to you. I don't matter because I could be telling you anything, but God is so gracious and so loving, and he created you in his image so that you could know him personally. You have the capacity and the mind set to go ahead and know Christ on your own. He is the Word. If you don't know this, you don't know Christ. You can't have a relationship with Him because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. That's in Genesis or in somewhere else in here in the New Testament. And the Word was made flesh. That's who Jesus is. It's His Word. The Word is spirit and it's life. Okay, so if you don't know God's Word, you don't know God. And here's the kicker. Many are going to stand before him, he said, in, 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 this, in this Bible and say, Christ, that just because you're doing things for him and you're doing great uh, feats for him, you could be raising people from the dead in his name. That's how powerful his name is, is that gifts and callings come without repentance. 
Remember that. Just because you gifted to preach a great sermon and heal people and get people, you know, saved. Even Paul said, after I've done everything that I can to win others, I got to make sure I'm right. Doesn't mean that you have the yada with Christ, the intimate relationship. You're not talking to him every day. You're not praying. You're not asking him for for guidance and it through his Holy Spirit. Once you give your life to him, he gives us his own spirit. And the Holy Spirit said that I will guide you into all truth. That's why you can't know truth unless you know Christ. You can't know Christ unless you know his word. It's all connected. That's the yada. That's the intimacy. That's the relationship. You could read this all day. I could be telling you what this says and don't even know what it what it's really means. I could read word for word and you still won't understand what this means. God has to revelate it to you like a relationship. That's why I get back to the marriages. Y'all are the most important thing that represents the relationship between Christ and his church. That's why he paralleled it with the, uh, um, a bride and a wedding and a, and a marriage. The bride, Christ is the husband, husbandry. If you look up the word husbandry, that means to take care of something, to make sure and till it. And, and to, that's what husbandry means. Christ is the husband and his bride. Those of us who accept his sacrifice that he made on the cross are his bride. Collectively, the church, not just, you know, the church collectively, those believers, we are, we are considered his bride. Why would Christ parallel his relationship with his, with his church and the marriage? Because marriage is the most important thing. The family is the most important thing. You people who are married, you are the nucleus of what represents heaven. That's why God hates divorce. That's why he hates fornication and adultery. Because it harms us. It hurts us. Any child that's grew up without both of their parents in the house is forever altered. I know what I'm talking about. For he, I'm just now recovering from the day that my parents called us all, all. I'm talking for my nieces and nephews. My my siblings know this. When when not all of you, because all of you weren't born. When they called us downstairs in the living room and they told us they was getting a divorce, we 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 don't know. What do we know? We kids. We we new to this world. What? What does that mean? We've known the love of you guys being together, and that's what we know it's supposed to be. What does this mean? I remember standing there feeling such an overwhelming sense of shame because I was like, well, you, if you're telling us this and you're telling me this, then it must be something we did because I don't want y'all to split up. I, I you know. I, this doesn't make this isn't making sense and I couldn't process it in my little mind. What does this mean? What does this mean for us in the future? And, and that's the first time where I was impacted with and I had to think about the future. Like, oh snap. Life isn't like if if this can go, what else can go? If 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 this can be destroyed, what else can be destroyed in my life? And I didn't know how to process that as a kid in my mind. So you know what I did? The only thing I could do, I actually literally laughed out loud. I don't know if my y'all remember this. I kind of like chuckled. I was like, this is funny. Cause I don't know any other way to express the confusion in, the, in my whole being. Like I don't, it's the same spot. Is this, this, this is new. This is not supposed to be happening. And that, was the, when I first understood, even as a kid, that life has to be contemplated. Like what you think is, isn't. All this time, I thought y'all was happy. I thought we was, this is how it was supposed to be. Y'all put up the, y'all didn't, we didn't, I mean, we might have seen an argument here or there or whatever. I didn't even pay any attention. We were young. I think I was maybe like 10 or 11 or something. So I think it was only me my twin brother, my sister Sonia, and the twins. I know there was a few of us standing there. I don't remember how, who, I don't know exactly how old I was, but I remember that moment. And even up until a couple years ago, three, three four years ago, when I was given an, 
assignment by my pastor of church to define what father meant because my father left. My stepdad came a little a few years later, but by then I was the oldest child. I was, you know, as soon as he came, I left the house, so I don't even know. Like, and my dad, God rest him, wasn't in my life. So whatever I learned, I had to learn however I, what I was given. So up until a few years ago when my pastor gave an assignment and said, I need you to write, y'all to write out the definition for fathers. And there's a story behind that I won't get into that has something to do with me bringing, even bringing it to the, to the forefront in my church. And I remember like going to do that assignment and I was like, wait a minute. I have no reference. I have no idea what a father is. I know I got uncles that love me, but they not, I can't relate to, they're not my father. They, you know, they come and help my mom check us for me, but I have no clue of what the definition of a father is. And I held that against my dad for a long time until one day, seeing his transformation, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I had to forgive him because he didn't have a father. My grandfather was deaf and mute. On my mother's side, my grandfather had all had passed away. But my grandfather, my father's dad, was deaf and mute. He couldn't talk. And he was personally deaf, I believe. He was deaf. Oh, he was just mute. But he was deaf and mute. And he was alcoholic. I used to watch my dad carry my granddad up the stairs struggling because my granddad was strong and he could and one thing he had was strength i mean he like you shake your hand and and let you know like you better shake your hand like you shaking the hand of a man but he had an alcoholic problem i used to watch my dad carry him up the stairs one day to the bathroom to sober him up because he was drunk and he was amazingly strong and, and my dad was huffing and puffing at the, and once he get him up the stairs and sweating and I, I saw that, you know what I mean? When I would go over to my grandmother's house, but my dad wasn't actively in my life. So I didn't know it. This is why it is crucial. I go back to the point where a kid child who grows up with, without both of their parents is forever. You don't know the impact that it has. This is why God is so serious about marriage and divorce and you shouldn't marry somebody let me just throw this in for all of my young cousins and because I, I see we have some great marriages in my family and I thank God for that but God is honoring you guys you especially you men who are fathers he said he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord all you got to do is align yourself with the word of God and watch the favor of God because he is for marriage. My first marriage didn't work because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I had no idea. I was a kid. I was My mind was immature and I ain't know nothing. I, my idea of women was just for my pleasure only and I didn't know because I didn't have a dad. I didn't have a, I didn't have a reference. I didn't see my, my dad wasn't there with my mom to love her, to show me what is, how it's supposed. And then growing up, Having all the siblings, y'all know my brothers and sisters behind me. I was the oldest, me and Mark. Like, I, I, like, there was always babies in my house. You know what I mean? So I had to grow up quick. I didn't get all that good attention. And my mom was doing the best she could to teach us love. That's why my family is the most important thing to me right now. Like, that's why I'm talking to y'all, because I love y'all. Like, without y'all, I, 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 I don't know if I would have made it. When I ran away from home... If it wasn't for music and my family, my siblings, yo, I've been dead a long time ago. For God, music, and my siblings, I'd have been, I don't know what I would have done because I done struck, fell for so many traps and stuff until, and those was the only things that brought me out. God using music and my family, my siblings, 
my brothers and sisters. I love to death. I love my brothers and sisters. I love my family. When I look at other families, I'll be like, wow, man, I don't see how you could just have a hatred and a disdain for your family. But I see now because if you don't have the parents and you're not shown the yada of the marriage and that there's no yada in the marriage, Y-A-D-A-H or Y-A-D-A, in the marriage, intimacy and and knowing each other and loving and and <sighs> do a search, do a research on God. And this is going. I'm sorry. I'm ho I, I'm hoping not boring y'all. Do a research on love and what the real attributes of love is. L love is kind. Love is gentle. Love is patient. Women, my nieces and stuff. When y'all waiting for a husband to look for those of you who are not married, this is what you need to look for: the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In a man, the fruit, not fruits, the fruit, meaning if you plant a tree, it's going to bring out one fruit. If you plant an apple tree, it's going to bring apples. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is God, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. These are the things that you need to see. And you can't see that. You're not going to see that, unfortunately. I'm going to do another video. And I'm, I'm about to launch a podcast dealing with specifically the relationship between man and God because it is important that when you understand the importance and the significance of the marriage of a marriage, you'll understand the relationship between Christ and his church. And this is the only reason he's coming back. We look. Most people are looking for the second coming, but he's not coming back to the earth until after his wrath is placed on this earth for all of those who rejected him. Hence, Israel and the spreading across the, long, the land, going back to that. I know I'm all over the place. But he said, I'm going to go back to his Hebrew Israelites. Not only were they to be scattered, but he said, you're going to be a byword, and I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to put you out there and cause all these things to happen to you. I'm gonna, it's in the Bible. I'm going to cause all these things to happen to you until you are destroyed. That's why I firmly believe and it's my personal belief, you can believe what you want to believe, that the black man in America, most of us, are Hebrew descendants. Because according to the word of God, certain things are supposed to happen. The Bible even said that, that Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the day that Christ comes. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Because I don't, I don't know everything about the Bible. So you scholars out there, sister, I got some eschatologists in my family. Y'all correct me. But the Bible says that the Jerusalem will be trodden down by the feet of Gentiles until Christ came again. I won't get into that. So back to the Hebrew Israelites. I believe that blacks all across the world are the most hate, hated people on this earth and it's not just because of the color of your skin trust me it ain't got nothing to do with it okay it's because of you represent a nation that represents what they hate the most which is God so if they can destroy you they've been trying to destroy us for years okay and they still doing it they deceiving us and they making us destroy ourselves right now and the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Do the math. It's not rocket science. God will explain it to you. He'll open up your understanding to what's going on with you right now. I don't care if you have a gazillion man march. It ain't going to change until we wake up as a nation. And he said, we won't even know who we are scattered abroad. Those of us who are scattered abroad, we won't even know who we are until the end times come when he reveals to us. And he said, and Jesus said, he's going to gather his people and bring them back. And he's going to plead with the nations for them. <laughs> I can't get into all of that. Call me if you want, if you want it. Like, you need to really get into this. My point in the whole matter is... Many are going to stand before Christ and say, Lord, didn't I do this in your name? I casted out devils. I fed the hungry. I did this in your name. And everybody and their mama, up until recently now, now people are denouncing. They don't want nothing to do with God or Christ. They're making it known. But for a while, Christianity was popular. And everybody and their mama 
claim to know Christ. But here's the kicker. Check this out. In the word of God, it's not the issue of whether you know him. Here we go, y'all die. Like you can know all about him. You can read this and know all about him. And go do things in his name that actually help people. Okay, it's not about what you do. It's about your relationship and accepting. There's only one way to do that, to get back to God. There's no other way but through Christ. Accept it or reject it. But know this. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess someday soon that Christ, Jesus Christ, is Lord. His Hebrew name is Yeshua. You Hebrew Israelites, y'all getting caught up into all of this stuff. Listen, it's because you rejected him that he said, okay, I'm putting y'all to the side now and I'm going to offer what you rejected to the rest of the world. And in me, there is no Jew. Oh! Blew your whole deal up. So it don't matter you walk around here talking about you a Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite. What trumps... The fact that you are a true Hebrew Israelite, which really is an indictment against you because until you repent to Christ, that's the reason you're in the trouble that you're in in the first place. Until you repent as a nation to Christ, that don't mean nothing. Now, he's going to deal with us. This is all ties in. Everything, remember I said, everything is connected. When he takes out his church, which because of your disobedience, he said, I'm going to offer what you rejected to the Gentiles and the rest of the wild world. So whosoever will receive will be counted as adoptions, my sons. I'm adopting you into what my own, my real sons, God said, rejected. My nation I call by my name. They rejected me. So I'm going to adopt you. We're, by, by adoption, we are able to call him Abba, Father. We can come to him just like we have been grafted in now. The same rights that apply to Hebrew Israelites applies to any Gentile who accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Up, uh, kill that whole thing. And I ain't say it. This is what I'm saying. Don't believe the lie. <clears throat> it's in here. Christ himself said, In me, there is no Jew. There is no female. There is no male. We are all one. This is, if you missed this, you miss the whole essence of the gospel. The gospel is about becoming one. That's what yada means. The scripture says the man and the, and the female through sex and through emotion and through commitment and through covenant, they become one, yada. They know each other. You was not meant to know every female you feel like you, you getting a, a hard on for. We wasn't meant for that. And I'm not speaking out of judgment. I'm guilty. I'm anybody y'all know. Y'all all y'all gotta do is go back a few years to see how I done. But my point is outside of Christ you have no unity. Many are gonna stand before him and say, Did not do this in your name, and I do this. He's gonna say. Depart from me. You worker of iniquity. I don't know you. You know me, cause you doing stuff in my name. Okay? You 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 figured it out. You figured that gifts and callings come without repentance. Okay? Cause I'm gonna get my job done, whether it's through you. I make the rocks cry out if I have to. My agenda is going to be accomplished whether you do it or not. Okay? And I'll use you. Even though you don't want nothing to do with me, I'm just got to hear this point. God will use those who want nothing to do with him to get his agenda done in this earth. Even those who want nothing to do with him, he uses to get his agenda done in this earth. Whether they like it or not, every knee will bow in the coming, coming soon and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. He is the one who raises nations. And brings them down. He decides who's king and who's not. This is why he tells us as believers to pray for our president. To pray for those who he 
put in government because he is the one who established governments. We don't have to know all of what's going on and figure it all out. We are to get involved and aspire to be the ones, the light of this world. So now I'm not saying don't get any, we should, we should be all up in politics. We should, okay? But our job is not to ridicule because if he can't get us in, he gonna have to take control of those who are in who we may be evil he still has the power to wield them according to his will. So whether I don't ascribe to Donald Trump or whatever, he probably, the crook, who knows, whatever. But if his principles and his things line up more with God than the next man, then guess who I'm going for? Guess who I'm praying for and, and supporting? I don't care who he is. I don't care who she is. God has a a way of superseding and Trump. It's interesting that this dude's name is Trump. I'm not going to get all into that. But don't be deceived. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Even Trump or whoever, they ain't getting away with nothing. Nobody's getting away with nothing. God is still sovereign. And he decides what's going to happen. And I believe that he's given us a small window while I'm talking to you right now. He's giving you a chance I said I was going to read something. Matter of fact, let me let me go ahead and read this. This is long. I'm sorry. You can turn it off any anytime you want to. Let me go ahead and read what I was going to read before. This is the window of opportunity that God has given us where I believe we are right now. He's given us a window. The powers that be would have done what is happening right now a long time ago. And in fact, that was their plan. Again, I mentioned earlier, there are people on this earth that own everything. They don't need money. Their, 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 their money is power and control. They want to control and be able to stay in their seats of power. So they have to control everything. And one of their part of their agenda is depopulating the earth. They think it's too many people here. This is, this is not my research and go look up the Georgia Guidestones. Georgia Guidestones and Agenda 21. Look these things up. It's, right, it's still there in your face. And the devil don't care. He'll do it in your face because he know how ignorant and deceived you already are. You're going to believe the lie. And God said because, here's another scripture. God said because they love not the truth. Oh, my God. And we already discovered what the truth is. That's Jesus Christ. Because they didn't love the truth. They knew the truth. Remember, they knew the truth. But they didn't love the truth. They, yada, they didn't love the truth. That I, God said, will send strong delusion that they will even believe the lie. That's how I know, I said earlier, that's how I know most of y'all are deceived. You're following a narrative and you're thinking that it's for you, but it's really against you. That's how clever and tricky deception is and the king of lies the father of lies is. This is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual war that's going on right in front of your eyes and it's all been told, foretold us. Okay, so God has given us a window. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. I believe that we're right at the point where Noah preached for 150 years telling people it's going to rain. God is going to destroy the earth because wickedness is so abound in the earth and people doing what they want to do. They're having sex with babies. They're killing babies. They're offering babies up as sacrifices. It's stuff you don't even know that's going on because they usually keep you entertained and keep you inundated with things you want and things you think you can have, luxuries of life and everything to keep you distracted while they're doing these things. This is what was happening in the days of Noah. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the, in the end days. I believe this is where we are. This is why I'm doing this. This is like, there are people all over the internet. There are people you can't, they're not gonna give the mainstream platform because it's the truth. They don't want the truth to be heard. There's so many lies that we believe in, I know, and I 
researched and I've prayed and I asked God and I was like, wow, when I when I've discovered the truth about certain things and how in depth the enemies will go to keep you delusional, to keep you believing a lie. They'll spend billions of dollars. Money don't mean nothing to them. They'll use any deception they can, any tool they can to keep you from knowing the truth. To keep us from knowing the truth. There's stuff I could tell you right now, you'd be like, nigga, please. That's not true. They've been teaching this, this is because this is what they, this science, te science teach this, science this and science that. Okay, well, God trumps science. As a matter of fact, there's nothing more scientific than this word right here. If you read this, you will really see. This will blow your mind. God will blow your mind. I'm telling you, with the things, I'm, I'm tripping right now. What I'm seeing and what I've over the years studied and studied in this word, to see it actually, I admit, there was a point where I was like, man, this can't happen. How can this happen? How can people see Christ come all over the world? I lived during a time where they didn't have internet or they didn't have social media. Or you couldn't. Now I could be I could, like you seeing me right now. They didn't have this technology if to go live and see stuff live. Now I could go outside right now and switch on my live and show you what's happening in real time. Might be a small, slight delay, but you can see what's happening in real time. I didn't, I, I, di I didn't believe it. Now I'm seeing how it could possibly happen. And we're being trained. We're being programmed. That's what television, that's why I don't really watch television. I don't watch regular news because I know they lying. I know they're not going to tell me what I need to know. They're only going to tell me what's befitting to their agenda. I would if I wanted to be a dictator and I wanted to rule the world and I owned all of the media and everything you say and I knew Edward Bernays taught them how to, uh, how to, <clears throat> if you put something before a person so many, many, many times and everything, they start believing that it's true. They done tricked us with a whole lot of things that you have no clue about. You went to school. They own the schools. They made it a law that you go to school and they took real knowledge out of school. They only taught you what they wanted you to know. But the truth will make you free. Jesus said, follow me. I will make you disciples. Then you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. When I started following Christ and he started revealing me, he said in Jeremiah 33 and 3, he, told, he said, <clears throat> come to me and I will show you things, great things that you do not know. I got to admit, there are times when I wish I ain't know this. There are times when I was like, and I, I wish I didn't know this because it dwindles the amount of people. If most of the people you're surrounded by are deceived, you can't have this conversation with a lot of people. And I'm only appealing right now to the fact that my, my sisters and brothers have been graced by God enough. And this family has been graced by God enough to know the truth. So if we, the part of the reason is we don't pass it down. That was the whole purpose of a family. The family, the mother and father to come together pre to produce offspring. Raise them in the knowledge of God and who he is because we were not made to rule this world <clears throat> without God. We violated in the Garden of Eden our ancestors and, and I don't care if our skin is black, we all are made of the human race. That's one of the tools of the devil to use our differences against us. But according to God, Jesus said, we are all one. What Jesus is interested in is unity, oneness, the oneness of us all, us coming together as a family. That was even one of his last things he said. I would that they would be as one as you and I are one, Father. I and them and them and me and you, us and you. One, unity. This is what people, anywhere there's disunity, you know that's where the devil is. Anywhere you see where they're trying to divide anything and use differences, people's differences against each other, I guarantee you that's not God. That's how you know certain movements or certain things is not about God. It's the devil and his trickery. And if you dig deep enough, you'll see where some things that you believe that were the truth, if you dig deep enough in some of these movements and some of this stuff, you'll see that it's deception, it's a lie. Because the 
the meaning behind it, the, the motivation behind what they're doing, and they know they got to use lies to trick us. The masses, most people are deceived. I can't have this conversation with a lot of people because most people will look at me. If I brought up certain things, certain truths, and I said that, that's why they shutting down anybody who's talking the truth. They got to do it because if too, too many people through the internet are discovering the truth on their own and through the Bible. They're hearing the truth and they're like, wait a minute, but they told me this. I really started getting into the the political truth and trying to figure out what was going on when, like I said, all my life I've been inquisitive. Like It started from that day when my, my dad told us he was divorcing my mom and I couldn't, and I, was introduced to the fact that, oh, everything ain't what it seems. I thought it was something that obviously it's not, and I can't figure this out. So I, I guess I better pay more attention. Now I start questioning myself, why? What well, was it my fault? What did I do? So that was the beginning of my being inquisitive and asking questions. I'm not going to let the teacher just tell me one plus one is two. Prove it to me. Show me by example. I need to see this. I, you. You know, I, you can't just tell me something is true and I'm just going to take it for face, face value. I've been hurt too many times doing that. I've been told I love you and you're the only, you know, and other things that I've been ganked so many times in so many different ways, not just in, in relationships, but, you know what I mean, thinking my little, you know, naive self going along thinking this one thing when it's really not. And people are evil. There's an evil in this world that you don't, no, that's don't care about your life, your very life. They'll use it and spend it just to get what they want. That's just the reality. And I had to wake up to that fact. When I was a little kid, I was like, this is the reality. This is real life. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. And I'm just a kid. And the first time I started getting into this political stuff and trying to dig deeper and find out what's going on, who's running the country, who's running me, why am I pledging allegiance, who am I pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States, why am I saying this, who, what does this mean, what is the Congress, what, remember y'all we used to watch when we was kids, they don't even play stuff like this no more, schoolhouse rock, they used to teach you a little bit of something, then they figured out, wait a minute, if we teach the slaves everything we know, then one day they may rebel and use what they know, that we know, to topple our empire. This is the people that run the world, and the people who run these corporations and banks. I'm sorry to say it, that's just the reality. I'm an enemy in, because I tell the truth. It's that simple. Anybody who's telling the truth, they censoring now off of social media. They own it. They're going to take your videos down. They're going to take you. They're going to, they're going to, not only that, they might, if they can't destroy your character and pull up something and we all dirty, everybody dirty. You, if you look hard enough, you'll find dirt on me and find a reason to discredit everything I say. You will, okay? You will look at my past and find, you could find something to say, uh, because of this, I don't want to hear nothing else you got to say. You will. Because <clears throat> I, I, I came from a life of sin and I had to be forgiven for Jesus Christ, from Jesus Christ because I was dirty. It's that simple. So you could dismiss this, fam, if you want to. Let me read this. We are in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah. And there's stuff you don't know about the days of Noah because they took out the Bible that if you saw what was going on, like giants and the Nephilim and all of that stuff, we won't get into all that. Call me. Let me read this. This is Hebrews 17. This is Hebrews, the New Testament, 11 and 7. By faith... That's what this is all about, faith in Christ. No. And his sacrifice that he made for us alone makes me righteous. Not what I do. Not, I can't earn it. Nothing I could do to earn God's love for me and, and, and his, that it was demonstrated through his son sacrificing his life on the cross for me. I can't earn that. It's gift. He gave me the gift of salvation, the gift of righteousness. I am righteous because he said I was righteous, because he has the right, because he paid for the right to call me righteous. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. As long as I have faith in what he did, trusting in what he did and what he did alone, not nothing I can do, 
not me being good. That's why a lot of people go stand before him and say, I did this and I did that. But I don't know you. I don't know you. Because, see, what I said was, believe, only believe, only believe, and have faith in what I did. I extend this grace to you and cover you by what I did. Nothing you could do to earn this. If it was, I wouldn't. there wouldn't be no need for me to come and do what I did. God himself coming in the form of man and dying for our sins because there was no way. The wages of sin is death. I'm going to tell you about death too. I'm going to tell you there's two deaths. Wow. It's too much. There are two deaths. Okay. Everybody that's in this flesh is going to die. Not everybody. Because some, the Bible says, Jesus said there's some that are standing here at the time that he was standing now that would... Well, that's the only thing. He would say they wouldn't die until they seen the kingdom. That would meant that meant being seeing him resurrected and the whole nine and the kingdom came because of what he did. That's what that meant. Not that somebody's going to not die until they see. But there are people who are going to be taken out of this earth alive. Okay, so they're not going to see death. Excluding them in this flesh. But see, the flesh is not going to go. We're going to be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. We, this flesh cannot dwell in God's holy presence. God is a holy God. I'll get into that. We could talk about holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Okay, so if Jesus said, make this connection. It's all simple math. If Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through me. Okay. It's more than just... The physical Jesus is the relationship and it's the following his it's the it's his commandments, following his commandments. Why do you call me Lord and don't do what I tell you to do? This is why many are gonna stand and say, I did this in your name, but you didn't do what I told you to do. You didn't follow my commandments. Without holiness, no man shall see God. See, see, Jesus just didn't come to take your sins away. He came to make you holy. Make us holy to get us where we're worthy to stand before God. Only his blood can do that. Only his sacrifice can do that. So as long as we have faith, meaning stay in him and obey his word and his commandments, he counts it as righteousness. And therefore, we are worthy to stand before God and go before his throne. That's the only thing that makes us worthy. Not anything we did. The faith in the fact that what he did makes us worthy, okay? And without holiness, no man will see God. So Christ is holiness. He, His Spirit, Holy Spirit, will walk us and teach us and guide us into holiness. And if you're not pursuing holiness, then you're not pursuing Christ. You're not pursuing that relationship, that intimate relationship. I'm talking about that deep, intimate relationship where you're getting into his word and you're crying out to him and you believe in his word and you obeying his word. You're doing what he tells you to do. For fornication is a sin. We don't fornicate. We don't have sex outside of marriage. That's his law, one of his commandments. Why call me Lord and not do what I say? If you love me, keep my commandments. You don't love me. You're not in a relationship with me. You're not keeping my commandments. You're doing things in my name and you're doing things, but you don't love me. If you love me, you will keep commandments and he gives it to you in his word okay back to noah let me read this by faith noah having being warned of god this is hebrew 7 11 and 17 in case you want to follow me in your bible by faith noah being warned of god of things not yet <clears throat> not seen as yet he warned noah this is why it was by faith noah couldn't see it but he told him. So he just believed the fact that because God said it, I don't see it. But because you said it, I'm going to move on what you said. That's faith. I don't see Jesus. I've never seen Jesus' face in my life. I don't care how many white pictures they put up on the wall. That ain't Jesus. They didn't have cameras back then. And I doubt anybody was taking pictures because he was always on the move. They was, I doubt anybody was, he was sitting long enough for somebody to take a portrait of him because it was always on the move. Somebody probably could have did it out of memory if there were artists back there. Did, but I'm sure those didn't survive or whatever in the whole nine. And plus, we don't know what he looks like. According to how the Bible describes him, he don't look like nothing what I've seen on pictures. Uh, we'll get into that later. Hebrew Israelites. So check it out. <clears throat> 
I know I'm all over the place, but I got to do this as I'm led. Thank you, Holy Spirit. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear. The fear was his respect and reverence for God. Not, but that too, okay, God said it, so he mean what he said. So if he said this happening, then he don't lie, and he's God, and he can make it happen out of respect respect and reverence holy reverence for who he is he is the god almighty he can do whatever he says he's doing and i'm just a human being let me bow my stupid self down and humble myself in the righteous fear and reverence and respect for god not just shivering like some people made it seem that that's all he meant prepared but he moved with fear he prepared an ark to the saving of his house Right, by the which he condemned the world, just out of building the ark. People was like, "This nigga, what is he? He? We ain't even, remember the Bible says there was no rain prior to, so they didn't even know what rain was. And God, just out of faith, no, no, had never seen rain before, and just out of his relationship with God, his close relationship with God, and he believed everything God told him before he did what he said. Noah said, okay, if you told me this, then this seems crazy and far-fetched and God, I don't know, this is crazy. But because you said it, and the same thing was with the, with the disciples when Jesus, when they, when he told Peter, you ain't caught nothing on it. Peter's a fisherman. They never know Christ to be no fisherman. Things they ain't even, they didn't think he knew nothing about. He telling them how to do their job and he just got here. He's Christ. Because he respected and by faith knew who he was, he said, nevertheless, at your word. Jesus said, y'all ain't catching no fish all night. Y'all fishermen, go out, go out and catch it. You just got back. Okay, I'm telling you. Now you're going to catch fish because on my word, I'm telling you, go out and catch your nets on this side of the, of the, um, ship and you'll you'll catch some fish and peter was like in his mind he was like this dude don't know nothing about fishing hold up who is he How, i'm a fisherman me doing this all my life you're not gonna tell me okay but because of who you are and i know who you are you're the son of god and you whatever you say happens and you have the power all authority i'm gonna do it nevertheless at your word and when they did it they caught fish that's faith just had to put that in there the faith thing Okay, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared, he put the work in. He ain't see rain, he ain't no rain, faith. Okay, I'm going to build this ark. It sounds crazy, but I'm going to do it by faith. Just on your word, I'm going to do this. Because I know your word is true. If you said it, it is what it is. He built an entire ark, and it took him 150 years. So for 150 years, you're not going to tell me he wasn't struggling with his faith. Like, man, it's, I'm building this thing. It's taking all this time to do this. I got to hold on to my faith for 150 years. If God said this is going to happen, 150 years, he preached to people, and he said, listen, God said it's going to rain, and he's going to flood the whole earth. And whoever ain't in this ark, when he do it, when he close that door, whoever ain't in this ark, that's your fate. He's going to flood the world as a judgment against the world because the world is grossly wicked and everybody doing what they want to do and nobody's listening to him. Nobody has a relationship with him. They're doing what they want to do. He gave you free will to either accept or reject him as long as you're on this earth, but he didn't give you the right to the consequence, to choose the consequence, and this is the consequence, and that's why God flooded the earth. A lot of people don't believe that, but it's in the Word, so it takes faith to believe that. you either going to have faith to believe anything I'm saying and do the research and ask God yourself, or you're not. I'm not going to let this go past two hours, I promise. Wow. Prepared an ark to, by faith, move with fear, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Righteousness by faith. This is in Hebrews 11. It was... So, and I'm reading this from this daily thing. I, read. I thought it was interesting, so I'm going to read it. It was through Noah's consistent faith and works combined that condemned the world. He not only preached the present truth appropriate for that time, but he acted every sermon. He had never lifted his voice if, had he never 
lifted his voice in warning, his works, his holy character among the corrupt and ungodly would have been condemning sermons to the unbelieving and dis dissolution of that age. Meaning, if he, even if he never said anything out of his mouth, just what he was doing would have been condemning. His voice, I mean, he bore himself with the Christ-like patience and meekness under the provoking insults, taunts, and mockery. His voice was, this is what we get sometimes when we talk about the truth. His voice was often heard in prayer to God for his power and help that he might do all the commandments of God. This was a condemning power to the unbelieving, praying and asking God to help, you know, all that stuff. The unbelievers are like, man, this dude is foolish, but this was condemnation to them. Here's the good part, what I want you to hear. But the time comes when the last appeal of Noah is made to the guilty race. After 150 years, that final day, he bids them yet once again heed the message one more time of warning and find refuge in the ark. He stretches out his hands in supplication with voice full of sympathy. One last time. With quivering lips and a tearful eye, he knows this is it. He tells them his work is done. He just finished the ark. It's done. Nothing else to do but get in. But the loud, coarse mocking and scoffs and insults were determined and are heaped upon him upon Noah. Enthusiastic, enthusiastic, fanatic, crazy falls upon his ear. He bids them all farewell. All right. See y'all. He and his family enter the ark. Here's the crazy part. And God shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door. He didn't even build no mechanism to close the door. That door that shut Noah in shut out the world. This is the rapture. I believe. That door that shut Noah in shut out the world. Judgment was coming on the world right now. The earth is about to be judged. I preached for 150 years. You could have got in when you, while I was building this. You could have heard and repented. And then God might be prepared, probably wouldn't even have flooded the world if you would have repented. It was a shut door in Noah's time. And the Lord shut him in. Up to that time, God had opened a door whereby the inhabitants of the old world might find refuge if they believed that that message sent to them from God through Noah. But that door was now shut and no man could open it. Probation was ended. The long forbearance of God has ceased. The figures in the books of God reckoned, reckoning had been accumulating. The cup of the unjust was full. I mean, the birth was full of wickedness. Mercy then ceased. God's mercy was done. I'm going to take that which led it out and I'm allow you to have what it is you want. And justice took the sword of vengeance. That's the tribulation. Justice is going to take the sword of vengeance for all the babies that was killed. For all the babies that... <clears throat> The kids that were being molested and killed and taken advantage of all the lies that people used to oppress people, even us black people. Jesus said, and I'm call me, I'll prove it. He said he's going to he's going to avenge. He's going to flip the script. This is what he's talking about. Now it's judgment time. I, for all these years, I've been preaching, telling y'all it's coming, about to happen. Get ready. Now, I'm about to close that door. And everything on the outside is going to get judged. Jesus said, Behold, I am the door <clears throat> to God. No man coming to the Father but by me. He's the door to God in relationship with him. He's the door. It's about to close. Jesus is about to take his... And then the wrath. <clears throat> he ain't coming back till after the wrath. To, the, to do the final bidding to put the seal of cap on. At the end, he gonna, he gonna destroy everything. But the judgment, the tribulation, the punishment happens 
after the church is taken out to the bridegroom, the supper of the Lamb, God is going to focus his attention back on Israel because remember, he said, okay, I'm going to put y'all side to the side. I'm coming back to y'all, but I'm going to deal with, I'm going to offer this to the Gentiles. And anybody who accepts it, he who has an ear, who, whoever, so whosoever will, I will receive you. Okay? And you become my bride. You become my church. And then I'm going to take y'all out of here so that we can celebrate because you believed in faith and celebrated with me and you didn't <clears throat> reject my sacrifice. Then I'm coming back. But I'm just not coming back by myself. I'm coming back with y'all. And I'm and I'm put the final cap on the judgment of this earth. And this is what people don't know. I talked about two deaths, right? I'm not going to get into that. Christ is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. So everybody that's telling you the earth is going to be destroyed and all, no, it's not. Not until Christ rules for a thousand years. We coming back to rule with him. That's another thing. The last part of this. The long forbearance of God has ceased. The figures in the books of God reckoning had been accumulated. The cup of the unjust was full. Mercy mm -hmm. then ceased and justice took the sword of vengeance. There was a shut door in Noah's time. There was a shut door to the unbelievers in the destruction of Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah, remember that story? But an open door to Lot, because Lot took the warning. Sodom and Gomorrah, that's another story. I won't get into that. There was a shut door to the inhabitants of Tyrus, a shut door to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, who disbelieved God. Jerusalem was destroyed because his own people didn't believe. But an open door to the humble. There's an open door right now to the humble, the believing, those who obey God, my commandments. Why call me Lord if you don't do what I say? Thus it will be at the end of time. Now, I just talked about Noah. This was what I described was happening to Noah. And he just said that last line was, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be at the end of time. This is where we at. The whole scenario is being played out. The rapture is going to happen. The only way you're going to make it out before God judges this earth, because he said in his word, we have not been appointed. His, his, his bride has not been appointed to the wrath of God. You can say what you want to say about the rapture. That don't mean we're not going to go through no persecution. Because he said, they that are God like God must and shall suffer persecution. That don't mean we're not going to feel some of the birth pains. Because he said, when you see these things start to happen, these are just the beginning of sorrows. Okay, so until he takes us out, it's going to get worse and worse for us believers, his church. Okay, after his church is taken out of here, he's going to deal with Israel. Other people will be saved. Okay, those are going to be the saints of God. And he dealt with them on a whole different level. I'm going to leave it right there. We can get into more. It's almost two hours. Family, this is a warning. We at the, we, we not, they used to talk about we in the last days. We in the last hours. Because if they pull off what they go, if, if, and I'm not saying it will, unless God intervene, he's giving us a window. The door's about to be shut. What if, what if all of this happens within the next couple of months? Are you ready? If you're not ready, you need to give your life to Christ right now. All you got to do is, is acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner and that nothing you do it's going to put you in right standing with God. But Christ and God's love for us came in the wages of sin and death. You are doomed to judgment. To dust. Your destiny is destruction and judgment. It's God, nothing, nothing that is unholy can dwell in his presence. So God has to make you holy through his son, Jesus Christ. You can accept him as your personal Lord and Savior and escape this wrath that is coming. That's the only way to escape. Otherwise, unless you die, you are going to go through what the Bible describes as the worst time on this earth. I'm not going to get into that right now. Call me if you want. It's, it's scary. But you only got a short window of time to do that. And I firmly believe, I don't know, I don't, I don't care about 
who Trump is. I just care about the fact that I believe that if they putting a rush on this and what they telling us to do with the mask and the only thing, the, the next thing after the mask, if you can't go in and buy a cell, you take the S out of mask and put an R in there and you have Mark, right? COVID-19. Certificate of va Vaccination ID. Why did they call it that? That can't be a coincidence. They're going to be able to mark you. You get the vaccine. If you don't get the vaccine, you can't go to school. You can't buy. You're not going to be able to get your license renewed. You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. Unless you have the, the certificate of vaccination ID. And the AI part, 19, that's a whole other subject. It's, it's, it's two minutes. I'm done. Two hours. I'm done. Repent and be baptized. Listen, if y'all hear this before this Saturday, what's today? Thursday, the 20th of August. Chemo. Your family is having baptisms out at um Rhonda Coit Bay this Saturday. Get in touch with her. Repent, this is what Peter said, and be baptized, all of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your only way out. That's the door. That's the open door. If you don't get in now, you may never get in. <clears throat> Kima's having baptism. Repent right now. Give your life to the Lord. Repent and tell the Lord that you're sorry for your sins and you, you ain't got to get all emotional and crazy, but you better do this and mean it with your heart. And ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, fill you with this Holy Spirit, because that's the seal. <clears throat> you don't just got to give your life, you got to publicly do this and make it known. He said, if you deny me before my father, I'll deny you before him. If you can't go and let everybody know that this is what you did, then you are not really doing it. Give your life to Christ. Okay? Repent. Get baptized with the filling of the Holy Spirit. The symbol of water being going under the water symbolizes you're dying with Christ. He died and was buried and he rose again and he ascended into heaven to his rightful place as the throne transformed into the, <clears throat> the image out of the flesh into a new um, body. <clears throat> we'll get into that. Give your life to Christ. That's the door. And God is about to shut it. He's about to shut it himself. And if he shut it, no man could open it. And then comes the judgment of God, the wrath of God. The Bible called, des describes it as the day of the Lord. When God, because you rejected his son, there's punishment. There's consequences for that. And there are people that know this. <clears throat> I'm going to say this and then I'm out. Remember, if you ever did anything when you was a kid and you got in trouble and you was around a whole bunch of other people, you didn't want to take the punishment for yourself. You wanted to, you wanted somebody to go through that punishment with you. So you start, oh, he, well, brother was with me and he did it too and blah, blah, blah. That's how the devil did. When he got kicked out of heaven and he know that his fate is sealed, he can never ever again. This is why you're so hated by the devil and his children. Remember, the father of lies has to have children. His children hate us too. They hate you too because they hate the truth. They don't love the truth. They hate the truth. It's the opposite. And the reason that the devil hates us is because we have the opportunity through Christ to be where he can never ever be again. His fate is sealed. After the day of judgment, when Christ comes back, one of his jobs is to cast Satan into the abyss for a thousand years. And then once a thousand years is up, Satan, hell, and, and <clears throat> those who are in hell <clears throat> will be cast into the lake of fire forever. That's the second death. The second death, first death, we all have to die. <clears throat> in this flesh, we die. But where we end up after that, determines is, is decided by the second death whether you live or die second death is judgment and eternal separation from god that's what the devil has already experienced the second death he's done he's still alive but it don't mean you're gonna die because your soul gonna live forever death 
second death means where your soul is going to live forever and total separation and damnation in hell. And not in hell, because hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. In the lake of fire. That's according to the word of God. You can believe it or don't believe it. It's up to you. Your soul is at stake, not mine. Give your life to Christ. Repent and be baptized. All of you. That's what Peter said. And they asked him what to do. Repent, meaning turn. 180, not 360. That means going full circle. 180, away from. Change your mind and your heart. Lord, I, either I believe, I believe this is true. I see what's going on. Your word is true. And if this is true, then you're true. And everything you're saying is true. By faith, I'm going to accept the, the, the sacrifice that you made for me on the cross. And when you do that, he seals you with his Holy Spirit to bear witness. His spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you are now the child of God. And therefore, he has not appointed you to the wrath. But we get to go with him and celebrate. That don't mean we're not going to suffer anything in this earth. Repent. Give your life to Christ. If you don't know how to do that, call me and we'll do it together. I'll lead you through it. Or call one of your aunties or uncles. You can call any one of us. You can call Sonia. You can call uh, Jakima. She is, she's in y'all, my, my young people, my young people age bracket. <clears throat> call her. She's having a baptism this Saturday. <clears throat> you can repent and be baptized this Saturday. Now, just because you don't go to a water baptism, let me clear this up, don't mean that God won't fill you with the Holy Spirit. If You, you have to have the Holy Spirit. That is your seal. That is what God is going to look at to see if you have the Holy Spirit, His Spirit living within you and that's how He's going to judge whether or not you have repented or not. Okay? So you need, that's the most important thing in this planet is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God right now. Without that, you are not sealed. That's his seal. The devil going to put his seal on you if you don't have that seal, which is the mark or the name of his, of the beast or the number of his name. One of those three. It's looking like that's what they're lining up for. I don't know if it's going to happen. May not, God. Only knows, but I don't want to take that chance. If you want to take that chance, that's on you. I love y'all. God bless. I'm praying for y'all. Give your life to Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Call me if you need any questions on what I said. I hope I said something that can you can connect or whatever. I know I was all over the place. That's just me. Somebody else could give it to you more clear. But I, my, your blood is off my hands now. Your blood is not on my hands. This goes for my sons and my daughters and everybody else. It's a personal thing. Okay, believe it or don't, love y'all, peace.